In the previous lecture, we saw what are time invariant and time variant systems and I also explained how to find out if the given system is time invariant system or time variant system. Now in this presentation, we are going to solve various problems and by using the results obtained from those problems, we will draw a few conclusions and using those conclusions, we will try to find out the answers of given questions directly because when you have multiple choice questions, there is no need to follow the conventional method of solution. You can directly choose the correct option by using the conclusions which we will draw in this lecture. So let's start with the first problem. In the first problem, output yt is equal to x cos t. This means there is an input xt. The input is always xt. This is one convention which we are using from the very first lecture of basic system properties. And this input is the input of this system. And this system is giving us the output yt which is equal to x cos t. And we need to find out if this system is time invariant or time variant. Now what do we mean by this statement? The system is time invariant or time variant. This means on providing a delay, let's say the delay is t naught. So on providing a delay of t naught, we want to check if the system remains same or it becomes some other system. If the system remains same, then it is time invariant system. There is no effect of delay. And if the system changes to some other system, then it is time variant system. So let's see how we can check it. The first step is to provide the delay to the output directly. So we will provide the delay of t naught to the output of the system yt and this will give us yt minus t naught. So simply replace this t here to t minus t naught. This means we are replacing this t here by t minus t naught. So we will have x cos t minus t naught. This is what we have after providing the delay to the output of the system. Now in the second step, instead of providing the delay to the output, we will provide the delay to the input of the system. The input is xt and we will provide the delay, the same delay t naught to the input and we will have xt minus t naught. Now we will feed this to our system whose property we want to check. So let's feed it to the system. The two systems are same and the output this time we will get is equal to x cos t minus t naught. Now let's try to understand why we have cos t here. If you see the original system, you will find the input was xt and the output was x cos t. So because of this system, instead of t, we got cos t. So here what will happen? The system is same and instead of t, we will get cos t. This t naught here is a constant, so don't confuse yourself with the variable t. The operation is on the variable t, that's why we have cos t here. And if you compare the two outputs, you will find they are not same. This means after providing the delay, there is variation in the system output. So the system is time variant system. I will write down the answer of this problem. The system is time variant system. Now let's check what will happen if we have an output yt which is equal to x tan t. Now there is no need to follow all these steps because we have already seen when output is equal to x cos t, the system is time variant system. So this time also, we will have the same result. The system is going to be time varying. So in this way, you can use the results which we are obtaining in this lecture directly. So we can conclude, we can conclude that whenever there is any time scaling, the system will be time variant. And this time scaling is not compulsorily to be on the input. It can be on the output as well. For example, in the third problem, if we have y t cube and it is equal to 
xt then also the system is time variant system why time variant system because there is an operation on the time which is a scaling operation this is not shifting operation it is a scaling operation that's why the system is going to be time varying system let's see a few more examples of this in the fourth problem in the fourth problem the output yt is equal to x t square again there is time scaling on the input side that's why the system is going to be time varying system you can check by following these steps so this is one conclusion which we have till now now let's move to the problem number 5 and in this problem output yt is equal to cos t x t so in this case we have a coefficient we have a coefficient cos t and this x t is our input and you can see the coefficient is having t so let's see what type of system we have in this case first i will provide the delay to the output so we will have y t minus t naught so wherever you see t on this side just replace it by t minus t naught we will have cos t minus t naught multiplied to x t minus t naught this is what we have in the second step we will first provide the delay to the input so we will have x t minus t naught after providing the delay to the input and then we will feed it to the system we are having and this time we are going to get cos t x t minus t naught because if you see the property of system or the functionality of the system it is multiplying a coefficient which is cos t to the input the input is x t minus t naught in this case in the earlier case it was x t and the system multiplied cos t so again this system will simply multiply cos t to the input so cos t multiplied to the input which is x t minus t naught so if you compare the two outputs you will find they are not same so we can say that we can say that the system is time varying system so this is what we have as the answer of the fifth problem now let's solve the sixth problem in the sixth problem output y t is equal to e raised to power minus t multiplied to x t now you can see again we have a coefficient with time t in it so there is no need to perform all these steps you can directly write down the system is time varying system let's solve the seventh problem in the seventh problem output y t is equal to 10 t plus 1 multiplied to x t again we have a coefficient which is 10 t plus 1 and there is time t in this coefficient so again the system is time varying system so we have developed our second conclusion and according to this conclusion when a coefficient in the system relationship is function of time then system will be time variant in fifth sixth and seventh problems you can see we have coefficients and all the coefficients we are having are function of time function of time so the system is time varying system so whenever you have such a system you can directly choose the option as time variant systems now let's solve the eighth problem in the eighth problem the output y t is equal to e raised to power minus 2k x t now this time we have a coefficient but the coefficient is not the function of time it is having k here so this system is not time varying system but it is time invariant system time invariant system because if you see t here you will find there is no scaling and when there is no scaling the system is time variant and when there is no time in the coefficient we are having then the system is time invariant system so the two conclusions which we have seen till now are telling us this particular system is a time invariant system let's solve the next problem the ninth problem in the ninth problem output y t is equal to 2t plus 
x t. So let's try to find out if the system is time invariant or variant. I will first provide the delay to the output. We will replace all the t's on this side by t minus t naught. We will have 2 t minus t naught plus x t minus t naught. Now we will provide the delay to the input. We will have x t minus t naught and then we will feed it to our system. And the property or the function of the system is to add 2 t to the input. This is input here and the system is adding 2 t to the input. This time the input is x t minus t naught. So the system will add 2 t to our input which is x t minus t naught. And if you compare this and this you will find they are not same. So the system is time varying system. This is what we have as the answer of the ninth problem and from here you can draw one conclusion whenever a system relationship includes any time dependent added or subtracted term other than input or output then the system will be time variant. This means if there is any time dependent term other than the input or output this is one time dependent term added or subtracted in the system relationship then the system is going to be time variant system. So we have three conclusions in this particular lecture and I hope you will remember these three conclusions. You can use them when you solve the multiple choice questions but when you appear in some conventional examinations then follow the conventional way of solving the problem which we have followed in problem number 9 and also in the two problems here in problem number 5 and in problem number 1 but if you use the conclusion or the direct properties you will have your answer within seconds I will write down all the three properties or conclusions which we have obtained in this lecture you can see the conditions for a system to be time invariant system these three conditions are very important because they are the only conditions for a system to be time invariant system if a system satisfies all the three conditions then it will be time invariant system. The first condition is there should be no time scaling. There should be no time scaling either in input or in output. We have already seen the examples. According to second condition if there is any coefficient then the coefficient should be constant. It should not be the function of time. And the third condition says any added or subtracted term in the system relationship except input and output must be constant or zero. So we have already seen different examples based on the three conditions and if there is a system which satisfies all these three conditions then it will be time invariant system. Now it's time to give you homework problems. In the first homework problem y t is equal to x log t in the second homework problem y t is equal to t square x t and in the third homework problem y t is equal to log t minus x t you can easily find out if the systems are time invariant or variant by simply checking these three conditions so use these three conditions and you will have your answer. There is no need to follow the conventional way of solution. For these three questions or any other questions based on time variancy you can solve by checking the three conditions. So this is all for this lecture. If you have any doubt you may ask in the comment section. In the next lecture we will solve few more questions based on time invariant and time variant systems.